Collecting and acting on user feedback early in a startup's life is key to defining product market fit. Notion makes it easy to collect and organize feedback so that it is visible, sortable, and generally easier to use. This video will show you how to conduct user research with Notion using a database. You'll learn how to standardize your research by adding properties to your table and creating templates for every research type. We'll also show you how to connect your user interviews to relevant meeting notes. By the end, your database will look like something like this, a neat, structured place that can turn data into valuable insights about your product. Without further ado, here's a workspace for a company called Acme Inc. In the product section, we'll add a table database by clicking on the forward slash key, then typing the word table. Let's select table full page, and voila, an empty database is created. Let's name it here at the top. Hover a cursor over the text. Click here to add an icon and here to add a cover. For the latter, we'll upload an image from our desktop. The next step is to add the first entry to our table. Let's say we're conducting user research on a customer called Mint Tree. We'll just add the name of the company here and rename this column to company name. If your users are individuals and not members of teams, you can simply disregard this column. This is our first table entry, and if you hover over it, you'll notice the option to open it as a page. Here, you can store all the information you gather about Mint Tree, from regular text to screenshots and videos. We'll get back to that in a minute. For now, we'll talk about properties, which always appear at the top of the page. Properties are pieces of information about each table entry, sometimes called metadata. They can come in many forms, such as regular text, dates, people, or URLs. Properties help create consistency in the data you collect, and you can also use them to visualize your data in different ways. Let's click outside our page entry to go back to the database. As you can see, our default tax property appears as a column. Let's delete it by clicking on it, then delete, and delete again. Now, we're going to add our own properties to this table. First, let's assume we want to collect the research type. We'll click on the plus sign here, name our property research type, hover a cursor under property type, and choose a select property. Here's your new column. Now, click inside the table cell and type in a user research type, exploratory, for example. Click on create exploratory, and now your first research type option is created. To add another option, repeat the same steps. If we wanted to select multiple tags for one row, we could simply change this to a multi-select property. Great! Now that our research types are added, we can add another property to our table. Click on the plus sign, and this time we'll select a date property, which we'll simply call date. We'll add a text property to add the interviewee's full name, as well as an email property for their contact information. Finally, we could add a person property called interviewer to tag the team member who is conducting the interview. Now that our properties are created, we can fill them out. Let's select the research type from the dropdown. For the date property, we can select the date the interview took place from the calendar that pops up. Type in your interviewee's full name in the text property and add their email here. Finally, let's specify the team member who will conduct the interview. Assuming this person is already a member of your Notion workspace, you can easily tag them by clicking on their name in the dropdown. If you can't find them right away, just use the search bar. Once a team member is tagged, they will be notified in their own workspace. We can store everything else about this interview directly in the page. Hit open again, and now you can use the body of the page to add all the content you want regarding your user interview. You can add all the questions you wish to ask your interviewee. You can set up a checklist of things to do before the call. Once each item is completed, you can check it off. You may want to turn some of your sections into headers. In this last section, let's create two subsections. One for product videos and one for product screenshots. To add videos to a page, simply hit the forward slash key and type the word video followed by enter. Then you can either paste your video link or upload it directly.
The same applies for images. Type the fort slash key, followed by image, then this choose an image button. Use the six dot icon to drag your content blocks and drop them anywhere in the page, including next to another content block. This will create another column in your page. Finally, should you want to include URLs, you can create web bookmarks by pasting the link into the page, then selecting Create Bookmark. One last thing we'll do is add a table of contents at the top of the page. To achieve this, type the fort slash key, followed by the letters TOC, then Enter. This is an easy way to jump to whatever section you want. To find out more about the types of content you can add in Notion, check out this video. With all your sections planned out and properties filled, we are now ready for the interview to take place. To make this process more simple in the future, you might want to copy these questions and turn them into a template for future interviews. Let's do this, shall we? The questions we added here are specific to exploratory interviews. We can simply select them all with the mouse and copy them in the clipboard. Let's click on User Research to go back to our table view, then on the downwards arrow at the top right of the table. Select New Template and paste your content blocks into the body of the page. In the Properties section, specify that these questions are for exploratory research and name your template Exploratory as well. Your database template is now ready to be used. Just give it an icon and click out of the page. If you click on the downwards arrow again, you'll see your exploratory template tucked up the dropdown. To use it for a new entry, click on its name. Now you can edit this entry as you please without having to copy paste your questions. You can create as many templates as you want this way. In our case, we'll simply create two more for two remaining research types, bugs and competitors. Edit a template at any time by clicking on the three dot menu next to it, then edit. Nearly done. What if you wanted to connect your user research to relevant meeting notes? When your team is discussing a new product or feature, it's extremely helpful to be able to look at user interviews to help understand product market fit. To link databases together, we'll have to add a new property to our table. Let's call this one meeting notes and select the relation property. This menu will pop up. Let's assume your meeting notes are all stored in a database of the same name. If that's so, click on Select a Database, then either select the meeting notes database directly in the dropdown or look it up in the search bar. Click on it, then on Create Relation. Your meeting notes column is created. All that's left to do is click inside the table cell and add the meeting notes associated to each entry. We can adjust our columns by hovering the mouse over the column separators and dragging right or left. Let's also drag and drop columns for a more logical order of appearance. This is what your user research database could look like with a couple of more data entries. We could quickly sort our entries to have our most recent interviews appear at the top. Finally, just note that you can choose to view the same data in different ways. You can access the View menu by clicking on Add a View at the top left of your database. To find out more about database views, check out this video. Our database is now complete. As you can see, you can build a good framework for user research in minutes, one that can make feedback gathering centralized and consistent. Remember that Notion databases are highly customizable and can easily mold to your team's needs, even as they change over time. With a perfectly tailored database like this one, you can wave goodbye to loose pages or their digital equivalent and turn the information you collect into insights for your product team that deliver value to the user.